I think I have enough lathes. It's amazing how uh, things just grow on you. What I wanted was a lathe to do some turning on and then I wanted it to be variable speed. Uh, the first one, the first mini lathe I got was the Simat 101 with mains motor and that is now variable speed using a treadmill motor and the treadmill speed controller uh, and that's fine. The main uh, thing that isn't quite resolved is that the taper is MT0 but truncated MT0 and I have some blanks there in that bubble wrap and one of the things I'm going to do is attempt some taper turning in order to get centers and arbors that will fit into the bore of the uh, spindle nose and the tailstock nose. That's something to do on there. And that has a thread on it, uh, obviously on the spindle. The other problem I've got with this one is no chuck key for the chuck. And because the thread isn't compatible with any of my other lathes, I can't swap a different chuck onto it. So I'm stuck with having to use that cheek, uh, chuck without the T chuck key. So that's a slight problem with it that needs to be resolved. A lathe which uh, is fully working, because it comes complete, is the uh, Unimat, Emco Unimat PC Basic. That is a variable speed lathe, variable speed drive, and therefore usable uh, straight away. A uh, similar one to that one is the Emco Unimat 4. And when I say similar, they both have M14 noses on the spindles. This one has a homemade variable speed uh, with a heavyweight scooter motor and the DC drive for that. It also has a lighter weight uh, scooter motor for the milling head. So the milling head is fitted with a motor as well as a lathe. Uh, and I have enough electronics to build two variable speed drives to drive them anyway. So the chucks interchangeable between these two lathes. They're not tapered, they are um, what would I say? Uh, a sort of straight shank on the uh, spindles. I'm just unscrewing the chuck up from that one. If I can get the, that out of there, it's not the same bore. So, although the thread is the same. The hole or bore is not the same. I'm not quite sure. I think it's a, also a parallel bore on the uh, headstock. That's something further to investigate. There's the classic Unimat lathe uh, and with its mains motor here. So it can be uh, operated with the mains motor and a couple of drive belts. And the job I'm waiting to do here is to drill and tap a hole into that scooter motor to match the mount motor mounting plate so that I can put the scooter motor onto it and there is the start of the electronics to do the variable speed drive on that. I don't know where my um, DC motor speed controller circuit is uh, for that. And then finally uh, a, a tiny flexi speed. You can see it in comparison to the Unimat there in terms of size. Uh, what this has that the others don't is a set of collets and so uh, a range of sizes in the collets. They're not, uh, there are only three arms on each of them and that's the collet chuck in there and so that gives us a way of chucking uh, round diameter items in those collets and 
the attempt at variable speed on that was to use sewing machine motors, and those are cheap sewing machine motors from China or somewhere, of two different ratings. The problem is that even with the foot pedals, they're rather... It's not very controllable variable speed with a sewing machine motor. I'm sure with practice you can get your foot into just the right position. And of course, because it's a, a universal type motor running off the mains, um, as you reduce the speed, you do reduce the torque. The advantage of this is phenomenal torque, because you've got a big lathe, not big lathe, a big motor from a treadmill, uh, and even with the uh, scooter motor, it, at low speeds you still get plenty of torque. So there we are, that's a quick overview then of those lathes, and uh, some of them may go, but uh, it's my pension, say. No, it's my fun. <laughs>